So I just made one game in one night. So in five hours, I made a 2D platformer game, which is called Mind Rush. And in this video, we're gonna check out how I made Mind Rush, what kind of difficulties I had, the type of errors that I tackled and all that kind of stuff. So it's basically going to be a devlog video as usual. And I'm going to share my experiences with you guys as I go. Now, before we get started with the video, I just wanna quickly mention that this video is sponsored by WSM Game Studio. WSM Game Studio is an asset store publisher with lots of high quality assets published on the Unity Asset Store. Warley from WSM is mostly known for his train controller and railroad system asset pack. There is also the brand new ultimate collection of the train controller, which is the most complete railroad system for Unity. From freight trains to subway stations, this pack includes everything you need to easily build a fully automated railway system for your game. Getting the ultimate collection works pretty similarly to a season pass. So you basically get every new add-on and extension included in the ultimate collection for completely free. If you still feel like you don't need the ultimate collection, there is also the base package which enables you the desired add-ons and extensions. You can check out more about Worley and the Train Controller Ultimate Collection through the links in the description below. So now with that being said, devlog. So when creating Mind Rush, I had the goal to make a 2D platformer where you have to gather items, also called materials in the game by the way, from the mine-like level. There are multiple floors, a bunch of traps, and four different material types, so you have to be very careful while navigating the level. Luckily though, you do have ropes and ladders that you can hang on to and climb on, so it kind of makes it easier to navigate. I also quickly want to mention that for this devlog, I wanted to try something new, so I limited myself not only to five hours, but also to just one environment asset pack from the asset store and one character. Both of these packs are going to be linked in the description by the way and the reason I picked to not do the art myself is not only because of the time restriction but also because I want to have I wanted to experience how it is to use assets from the asset store to actually make a game using them. So I got started by devoting my first hour into building the level. Because the game is a platformer I thought that it would be a very important step to put a lot of time into level design, which is also one of the topics that I love the most, as you probably already know. <laughs> now, I'm going to be honest, designing the level was a little bit difficult at first, and I'm going to explain why. So, I started out by using the tile map system in Unity to easily place down tiles instead of manually building the level myself. However, I quickly got tired of placing all the tiles in manually, like rotated tiles and stuff like that. So I imported rule tiles from Unity and started using that. And if you haven't heard of rule tiles before, it basically allows you to set conditions for the tiles that you paint, meaning you can set a condition like if you have a tile under the tile you're painting right now, the tile you're painting will be a different sprite. I started having issues with some tiles not rendering properly and quickly realized that somehow the Z axis of the tile tile map game object itself had changed. So some of the tiles were appearing behind the camera, which was really weird. I then wanted to place some shadows behind some of the tiles to make them stick out more. And I figured that I could set up a tile palette for it, but it didn't really work out because somehow the transparent parts of the shadow tiles rendered the background invisible of the game, which was also even more weird. So I decided I could place them by hand instead. After solving the Z-axis issue by simply changing it manually through 3D mode, switching out from 2D, I was able to solve all the other issues with it, and now I could finally get started with building the level. Designing this level, I had a few requirements set for myself. Number one, I wanted to have multiple floors or levels as I wanted the player to enter different trap zones. Like one floor would have multiple spikes, another one would have a cart driving fast from left side to right side, so on and so forth. And number two, I wanted to have multiple ropes and ladders the player could take if one path was blocked. So I wanted the player to be able to take the path to say gold mine, right? If they were ordered to pick up some gold instead of having to take the route to diamonds. And number three, I wanted to give the player the feeling that he's alone in the foreground of the level, but not in the background. So this is why I added these open gates or doors that would have a chance of spawning a random material every time you pass by it. This was made specifically to create the feeling that there is a colleague of yours behind that door that is passing you through some materials. So having those rules or requirements signed off, it was time to make the player script. This was actually pretty easy to do for the first time ever, as I just wanted to rotate the player depending on if they're walking left, so meaning they will look left, 
or if they're walking right, they, meaning they will look to the right side. Now I quickly realized I was having some issues with colliders though after coding the player. So the reason I was having difficulties with colliders so much was because I built the level before taking care of collisions. That's not a very good practice, but under the time limit that I had, I kind of ended up rushing it from start, which ended up creating more issues down the road. It's always best to get the basics done before committing to build a whole level like I did here. <laughs> so for this time around, I just fixed the issues manually by simply changing the colliders for each sprite. I also made them trigger for the objects that were interactable, like the doors, chests, and mines, and so on, so that we could actually walk past them without getting blocked. I then implemented jumping to my player script and after that was done it was time to extend the player component to support climbing and hanging from ropes and ladders. But once again, collisions. <laughs> I swear, collisions have unfriended me as soon as I started making this game. It was so bad. Collisions were being a pain in the neck again when I was doing the rope thing and I lost so much time on it trying to figure out how to solve it. It just didn't make any sense because I was doing the right things or at least I thought so. <laughs> Then I realized I was actually not doing the right things. I was checking for the tag rope for my player to detect collision between the rope and my player so that we could climb up, right? And I never set the tag rope for the rope object. I accidentally created a layer for the rope instead of a tag. Can someone just put me out of my misery, please? See, even people who have been using Unity for so long can make beginner mistakes. So I'm, I'm using that as an excuse <laughs> to cover up the fact that I was just being dumb. After that problem was fixed, or I was fixed, <laughs> I added some shadows to the foreground behind the ropes to make sure that it's clear enough for the player that they can climb up in front of the tiles. It also made it look really nice, actually, so I'm very happy with that decision. And now I was at a point where the player controller was finished. It was fully properly functioning, hanging and climbing from ropes and ladders worked, and the level was also pretty much finished. So it was awesome, right? And now was the time to get into a little bit more advanced stuff. So first things first, I wanted to make the doors functioning. So I started coding the material spawn system, which I also call the item spawn system, in a script that is called the material manager. I then created a game manager object and stored the material manager on this game manager. And then I created a material spawn source, which would be the spawn point of our materials, like the doors, chests, and mines, and so on. After assigning all the properties in these components, I was pretty confident things were gonna work out. So I play the game and this happens. Uh, oh, and Unity cry, all right, okay, so Unity, okay, good, nice. This is exactly what I needed. So looking back at the code, <laughs> I'm not very proud of this, but apparently I was checking for the other object colliding with the door, which obviously is the player, right? Then I was attempting to spawn the player infinitely, which explains why Unity crashed, right? It literally bailed on me. So after restarting Unity and doing it all again, I created a function in the material manager to pick a random material that it would spawn. I then added the component to all material spawn sources, created a condition to randomize how big of a chance there is that the source spawns the material and got started on the stash system finally. It was actually quite easy to make the stash system. So this just basically allows the player to stash their items for whenever the card is coming to pick them up. I also had to make sure that the player could pick back up the items they stash so they can put it somewhere else and reorganize and stuff like that. I then also added spikes into the game which would result in game over if you collide with them. And then I reworked the level a little bit to open up the spot for the cart to arrive because it was kind of crowded at the bottom level. Then I made the cart system. So now the cart would arrive every 30 seconds and give you 45 seconds to make sure the delivery is there. If you cannot deliver all items, you will get 25 points for per item if they're incorrectly sorted compared to the order list. If the item is sorted correctly, so if it says the first stash is supposed to hold gold and you actually place a gold there, then you will receive 75 points for that item. And if you deliver all items as ordered, you will get 200 points as bonus. To make clear what the order list was, I created a simple UI for displaying the list, which would appear at the top of the screen and update every time the cart would departure with the deliveries. As the last feature of our game of Mine Rush, I added the cart of death on the fourth floor, which is the cart that, that will drive by real fast every 10 seconds, moving from left to right, and if the player gets hit, game over, obviously. 
And finally, I made some refinements to pretty much all values, including how often the cart arrives, how fast the player moves, the collisions for the spikes, the movement speed of cart of death, and so on. Literally all the values you can think of. I filled in at around five hours and 11 minutes and decided to stop working from that point on because I was getting really hungry. <laughs> now, looking back at it, I had a fully and properly functioning game, which was actually pretty fun to play. And honestly, it's actually pretty good for five hours, uh, but that's not to say that it couldn't be better, you know what I mean? I think I could have made it a lot better if I didn't lose so much time at the start on collisions and stuff like that, but that's fine. It's a part of the experience anyway. So that's pretty much it for this video. Hope you all enjoyed watching. I think it's really entertaining to make these and they should be entertaining to watch as well because I know for myself that I like watching these devlog videos. And at the same time, they're also helpful because I kind of share my experience with you guys and you can see how I make a game, how the process looks like. Now, if you guys enjoyed watching this and want to see more devlog videos on this channel, make sure to give this video a thumbs up to show some support because it helps a lot. And also hit the subscribe button below the video to stay up to tune for new content. And for those of you who didn't know, we also have a Discord server for game development and for Psycho, so for this community, you can join us by going to the link discord.gg forward slash polyrealm or use the link in the description. We're basically just a bunch of like-minded people that like to chat, you know, meme, a lot of memes by the way, um, have fun, you know, complain about YouTube, literally anything you can imagine. <laughs> but mostly talk about game dev, trust me. <laughs> and before ending this video, I would also like to give a huge shout out to all of our patrons, Richard Stance, Cupola, Flu Joey, AcademyofGames.com, Terrorif.com, John Funnel Grid, Couch Ferret, Glasswell Entertainment, and Beard or Die. Thanks to your support on Patreon, I'm able to make more videos. Also, exciting announcement. So this week I'm gonna be in GDC or at GDC in San Francisco with Unity. So I'm gonna make some videos there. I'm gonna do some vlogging. Uh, vlogging, I know. I'm still not sure about that. I'm probably not like 100%. I'm not 100% comfortable with the fact that I'm gonna do vlogging or with the thought that I could do vlogging, but I'll try. I mean, I promised it last time and it never really happened. So I really want to nail it this time. But yeah, what I wanted to say is I'm going to be at GDC. So you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram, which are both linked in the description. Uh, my Twitter and Instagram handles or usernames are Saiku Sam. So you can follow me there for a bunch of pictures. Trust me, a lot of pictures are coming up. Um, and obviously the vlog on this channel and I'm gonna push some YouTube stories while I'm there too So it's gonna be pretty cool, but most importantly also before I forget uh, There are going to be videos while I'm gone So I'm gonna make videos and post them regularly just as usual So two videos per week even though I'm in GDC and I'm saying two videos per week because I'm actually gone to San Francisco for about two weeks. About two weeks is like 11 days. So I just wanna make sure that you guys know that there are going to be videos. Anyway, now I'm not gonna bombard you with any more information. So thank you so much for watching this video. Hope you enjoyed. Um, I'm gonna be super active in the comment section and in our Discord server. So hope to see you guys there. And thanks for watching once again and have a good night and peace out.